Hey guys, HCG Chica. Welcome back. We're on episode 19 now of the HCG Diet Interviews with Everyday People, um, making a success of this protocol. I have Lenita with me today. She's actually lost in the neighborhood of 80 pounds with the HCG protocol. And um, she, I, she has an interesting story to share uh, with you guys today. She's actually been maintaining the bulk of her late weight loss for quite some time now. Um, but we're also going to talk about some of the challenges um, to maintaining and, and how she's trying to meet those and things like that. So welcome, Lanita. Hi there. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank good, you. Good, good. So why don't we start um, out by telling us your, your age and your height? I am 52. And I am five foot three inches, so I'm a short person. Okay, you got a couple inches on me, but yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. But you're still short. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you tell me uh, what your starting weight was when you first started HCG, and then where were you kind of hovering around most of the time after um, that? My first round, I started in um, the beginning of 2011, and I was, um, well, at the end of 2010, I was 212. And then I started at 206. Okay, gotcha. So 206. And then where did you eventually get down to? Um, in 2013, I got down to um, 142. Cool, cool. So yeah. I think that was around 80 pounds, right? I can't remember. But... Well, it, there was 80 included gaining and losing and gaining and losing and gaining and losing. Yeah. Sure, gotcha. Okay, well, anyway, it's a good amount. So. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Now we talked about um, on our first call the fact that you've done some correction rounds since you got to your initial lower weight. Um, and, you know, for me, what I try to do on my blog is present real information. And, like, you know, the reality is, is that sometimes we do regain some weight and then have to relose it. I've had to do that a number of times. You know, thankfully it was small enough that I didn't use H need HCG for it. But, um, so anyway, you needed to do that, and what I find great about this story in particular is that you've maintained the majority of your weight loss, right? Yeah. So it's like there's been times where you may have gained 10 or 20 pounds, but you always catch it before you find yourself back up at 200 pounds, right? Oh, yeah. Why don't yeah. you kind of just share a little bit about that process for you, what you struggled with, you know, when you would step in and correct it, stuff like that. Well, a lot, you know, a lot of it too is that I haven't actually gotten to my ultimate goal weight. And so um, each year I would do a couple of rounds and then, you know, by the halfway mark of the year, I would take the rest of the year off, do maintenance. Um, sure enough, come October, November, December, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, um, I would find myself at, you know, the beginning of the next year, 10 pounds up. Gotcha. So, you know, I had pretty much up until this last year had already planned that I would start the new year doing new rounds. Yeah. Um, and so I would do another round, have to lose the 10 and then lose yeah. additional after that. Um, and last year was the, or this year, actually, 2014 was the first year I didn't do a round first thing in the year because I actually... I had maintained um, in the 140s. I went down to 142. I actually lost a little bit more um, and then came back up and just went around in the 140s for the remainder of the year last oh, year. Cool, cool. Um, so you found that for a large portion of the year when you weren't on HCG, you, you could maintain and stabilize pretty well. It was just during those holiday months that you, things would get out of control. Yeah, and I even just looked back because I keep all my things in my fitness pal. Yeah. And I looked back and I actually even maintained in the 140s through the holidays this last year. Oh, okay. Because um, um, I kept real active, working out, running, and so forth. Gotcha. Um, and so I actually kept in that 10 pound. And so right. I was I was actually going to be comfortable with the 10 pound yeah. and live with it because some was muscle, you know, gain from working out. Yeah. And, yeah. you know. I was in a size eight, so, you know, I was happy with being in, you know, in the 140s. Yeah, cool. So you and would then, kind of vacillate between like 140 and 150? Yeah, I, yeah. Thing. and actually it was like 142 to 152. Cool. And, I, you know, and um, although when I was looking, you know, towards November, December, you know, I was more up towards the 148 to 152 range. Yeah, got you. Um, 
But so, like I said, I started this year happy, you know, there and yeah. thought, well, I'm going to take a year off. I don't think I'll need to do HCG again. I'm maintaining. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. How long would you say you've been kind of staying in the 140 to 150 ish range now? I had actually stayed for about nine months. Yeah. And, and then I had a surgery. And then that, you know, all bets were off there, unfortunately. Yeah, totally. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that while we're on the subject? Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, you know, I had, I ended up having a tummy tuck and cool. breast lift cool. and it was, you know, to be able to, you know, in, in your fifties, your skin doesn't bounce back the way it does when you're in your thirties. Yeah. So I was able to um, have a, a, a tummy tuck to get rid of a lot of the excess that was left over from the weight loss. Yeah. And part of the thing that, you know, I didn't even think, you know, I mean, I knew I'd be inactive for six weeks, but I didn't realize the fatigue and stuff that would last after the six weeks and how hard it would be back to get back into a routine and then I found myself comfort eating. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that that 10 pound went up to 20 pounds. I ended up um, up in the higher 150s. Gotcha. 156, 158 after my surgery. Gotcha. So you had a good nine months kind of of maintaining. And we'll talk yeah. a little bit about how you were doing that, like what you, what types of stuff you were eating in a second. But, um, but then, of course, with the surgery, what would you do differently now if you could redo after the surgery? To, is there anything you think you could have done that might have made it easier to maintain? Um, I probably would have scheduled another round of HCG after the surgery, um, yeah. only because, I mean, yes, I, I probably, knowing what I know now, I probably would have really watched carbs. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the inactivity was really difficult. And then I also, I have fibromyalgia, so gotcha. I didn't, I have been symptom free for the four years that I have done HCG rounds, not even, a, even didn't even think that it was associated. And then realizing um, after the surgery that I had a horrible flare of, or, you know, yeah, and it all came back and we realized and um, so I, I really believe the surgery not only messed, messed with my fibromyalgia, but also with my metabolism. You know, the work that I had done to stabilize my metabolism on HCG, I think the surgery went in and wrecked it. Yeah. You know, like so many things can, medications. Right. And so. Gotcha. So that so. kind of just threw a monkey wrench in there. And it did. Because, yeah, I mean, I was maintaining. And then after it just, the weight just really started going on, coming back on like it did before I ever found HCG. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's interesting for other people to compare because some people do consider doing um, like corrective surgery and you know, so, and it can be great too, you know, cause yeah. like you said, after you lose a lot of weight, um, it can be nice to tighten it up a little bit with stuff that you can't change except surgically. Um, yeah. But there is of course, you know, other possible side effects that you might have to correct. So, but you're doing that now, right? You're doing another round at this time. Yes, yes. Actually, once I realized, you know, my doctor and I, I go to a natural path. And so he and I talked about it and realized that the HCG actually seemed to put m the fibromyalgia symptoms in remission. Wow. And so that was, you know, my key. But then also realized, oh, I could take this, you know, get this weight back off again, too. It would be nice. Cool. So, yeah, a couple things at once that it can help. When do you feel that your your weight issues began in life? Like what, what factors caused that to happen? Well, interestingly, and just being completely transparent and candid, um, uh, drugs. Um, I, I used drugs as a teenager. Okay. Um, and then I stopped doing drugs, but actually was still hanging out with some wrong people. And it's interesting because I was talking to my husband last night. Um, I ended up getting um, slipped some drugs. Huh. By some, you know, through by some people. Yeah. And it's interesting because it almost seems like the very day after that happened, I ballooned up. Wow. So I don't know if it affected, you know, the chemicals or whatever affected my metabolism. Yeah. Or, but um, because I was, you know, I was very small. I was probably 125. Gotcha. You know, and um, actually, I was now that I think of pictures, I was really small. Yeah. And, and after that day, it was it was four hits of ecstasy, and so it's a lot of bad chemicals. Wow! Um, I went up to one sixty five within a couple of months. Wow! Did you feel like after that happened, 
Like, do you feel like it was mostly a trigger, like, chemically like that? Or do you feel like it also triggered you to, like, eat more, too? Or just that your body was actually, cha like, changing the way it utilized the calories you ate? You or know, both? I think it affected my metabolism. But then I also, because I was changing my life and trying to get away from that, you know, lifestyle, right. you know, I think I did go towards food. You know, I remember, I remember binging and not being able to control what I was eating. Gotcha. And so, yeah, I ended up eating way too much. Gotcha. So, yeah. You know, and then I was able to take it back off after the birth of my son, but unfortunately that was, I ended up getting involved in drugs again, and I was actually a meth addict for two years. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so how did you get yourself out of that place initially? Um, I just got to a point where there's been so many bad things that happened during that time. Yeah. that um, basically woke up one day and just like, this is not the life I want to live. And so, yeah, made the changes to, you know, So get kind away. of overnight in a way, like he was like, that's yeah. it, I'm done Actually, with this. Actually, yeah, I had a lot of really, a series of really bad things happen. Oh, and wow. it kind of just opened my eyes and realized it was a product of, of my lifestyle. Yeah. And so if I didn't change it, things were going to continue that way. So I just did. I made the decision one day I wasn't going to do it anymore and wow. um, worked towards that goal. Wow, that's so amazing. Thanks for sharing that. That's like a really personal story. So yeah, thank you for sharing it. Yeah. So so you've so you've really made a big change in your life then, like to go from that and the struggles you dealt with there, you know, to now. And then how like it it's funny, huh, how you don't always realize when you when you embark on some lifestyle how many different things it'll affect, huh, in your life. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very true. You know, and it's been, it's, we're talking, you know, for me being in my fifties, we're talking, it's been a 25 year process, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, wow. you know, it's interesting because I, I have a website and, or, uh, you know, oh. I, well, it's, it's kind of on Facebook, you know, oh, and cool. I haven't been, I actually haven't been doing anything with it, but yeah. this has kind of made me start to think about, you know, taking it up again and sharing. Cool. Um, and it's called Becoming New Again, and that's, you know, I just, it's kind of a process of continuously becoming new again. Good. If you like, we can share a link to it in the blog post. Would you like that, or? Yeah, I, I, can, I can send you the, the Facebook link, because I okay. really think I'm going to start blogging in it, yeah. and just kind of through my HCG process, the fibromyalgia process, the menopause, aging, yeah. uh, the whole thing, right. you know. I feel like we need more positive input, you know, like the more positive input we can, people can access. So uh, we'll put a link for anyone, for everyone who's listening, we'll put a link to, to her Facebook. Um, I guess it's like a page or group um, in, yeah, the, in, the, in the show notes. So <laughs> cool. Okay. No, continue. <laughs> That's, you know, I lost the weight again and then I got, got away. And then once again, being off the drugs and changing, you know, I think, I think for me, if I go through major changes, I might end up, you know, one of my patterns might be to, you know, go towards food. I know. Yeah. Um, actually, when I met my husband, I was two years clean. Cool. And um, we got married, got pregnant. I was in my late 20s. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I recommend having children when you're young. <laughs> and uh, so my pregnancy wasn't great. And then my thyroid actually died during my pregnancy. And so um, after I had my daughter, um, plus I have a theory about having female children i think they ruin your hormones ah, <laughs> more so than boys interesting yeah i actually think i've heard that i've heard that before yeah it's interesting because boy i think there's you know warring hormone female hormones yeah. when you're pregnant with females yes so, but, um, so i ended up uh gaining a lot of weight after i had my daughter and i just gotcha. it you know went up over the years then hysterectomy health problems medications I really you know once again going back to drugs I think my body's just really sensitive to chemicals gotcha and um, I think drugs have done a lot pharmaceutical and recreational right to right. mess up my metabolism gotcha yeah so you just had so many things going against you um and you know actually while we're on that topic um with the thyroid thing we, we could probably talk about that a little more yeah. um while we're here because um thyroid is a, a lot of people deal with hypothyroidism Right. In yeah. fact, I think there's actually a lot of people who have it but don't realize it at this time. Yeah. So, have you been have you tr have you been treating it? Do you notice a difference with how you feel when you're medicated for it or not? Or tell me about that. 
Um, I was medicated on just basic regular Synthroid, Levothroid, okay. which is, you know, what the regular doctors give you, you know, for years and still stayed really heavy and gotcha. still had the fatigue and, and all of that. Yeah. Um, were your lab tests normal though? Oh, absolutely. My lab <laughs> tests were normal. So then you exactly. must be feeling better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like well, I don't. <laughs> yeah. A family member actually really did some research and shared with me you know, about T3, T4, uptake, H, yeah. you know, the, whatever, the TSH and all of the different lab tests. Yes. <laughs> and, um, excuse me. Oh, sorry. sure. <laughs> and um, so that's when, you know, when I was actually going through this process of getting healthy, um, which started when I was 48, and we'll probably get to that when I was my aha moment at 48. Yeah. And, um, but uh started going through the process of getting healthy. That was one of the things I got off all of my pharmaceutical medications. Wow. Um, which actually I was taking nine different pharmaceutical medications. Wow. And that was one to uh, manage your fibromyalgia. Right. Yeah, several for the fibromyalgia and they gave the fibromyalgia, they'll give you antidepressants oh, okay. for um, pain management. Okay. And, or plus probably depression because you're in pain. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so there was there was a you know, then sleeping the muscle relaxers gotcha. and you know different things, you know, and then medications to combat the side effects of the other medications. Gotcha. And so, oh, yeah, it's a big nice. ugly cycle. So um I I didn't feel healthy until I one got off of the um the levothroid synthroid okay. and got onto armor, you know, a, a natural desiccated thyroid right yeah i don't know how natural it is but well it's ground up real thyroid basically right from from I some guess. another animal or yeah I just don't think about what what, what whose thyroid got yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm glad you mentioned that because um for anyone else out there who's not too familiar you know who, who thinks they're dealing with thyroid issues and they're not familiar with it um i can recommend a really good website that basically talks all about why Synthroid and other T4 medication does not work for most people. Right. Why they take it and their lab tests are normal supposedly, but they don't feel any better. Um, right. And that switching to like a natural desiccated thyroid, which Armour is one brand. There's actually other brands now from other countries too. Um, why that's made such a big difference for people where they actually felt better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, part of that is because natural desiccated thyroid has um, small amounts of T3 in it, right, which is, that's actually active hormone. Um, and the reason I know a lot about this, too, is because um, I, had a high, I had a hypothyroid condition, and um, thankfully, I had a naturopathic doctor who, he was actually kind of on the up and up. So when he originally found out my condition and prescribed me a medication, it was actually straight T3. Um, wow. Yeah, and I didn't even know anything until I went home and researched, and I was like, oh, he gave me the right stuff. And I'm wondering, is that better than armor? I mean, because that's something I'm wondering. About. Yeah, you know what? I think it probably varies. From what I've researched, I've only tried the straight T3, um, and actually at this time I'm off of all of it. But um, for a long, t for about two years, it gave me my life back. And um, I can't compare because I haven't done the desiccated natural thyroid. Right. What I've read is that people who have Hashimoto's, um, you know about that? Yeah. I have that. So it's an autoimmune disease. From what I've read, people who are just straight hypothyroid without that element, they do very well on the natural desiccated thyroid. Okay. But they were saying that for people with Hashis, sometimes that can actually provoke an autoimmune attack um, because of like the iodine and stuff in the natural desiccated thyroid. I think it's been a little while. So... Um, so anyway, that's just what I've read. I don't, I don't know if it's completely true. I just know the T3, I mean, it woke me up. I, I can't believe. Yeah. You don't feel like you're living in mud. Yeah. That's, yeah. Cause that's what you, you feel like every day you wake up and you just have to live your life in mud. Yeah. And like half your brain is missing. <laughs> so. Half your brain and all your energy and yeah. 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 I couldn't believe how much better I felt on, yeah. You know, and so even the natural desiccated thyroid does have some T3 in it, smaller amounts, but People right. have, you know, so anyway, for anyone else, I yeah. highly recommend it um, because I don't really think the HCG will fix that necessarily, yeah. you know. So, right. So that's I cool. agree. Well, that and also, you know, being, you know, I had a hysterectomy, so I had hormone replacements, and that's another one. I mean, I gained 30 pounds in three months after being on um, Premarin, is, you know, uh, what they give you after a hysterectomy, they give gotcha. you Premarin. Gotcha. And what is that again? It's like a pharmaceutical yeah it's actually 
pregnant mare urine. Okay, okay. It's horse pee. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, first off, when I found that, I'm like, okay, that's just nasty. I don't want that in my body. But then, you know, when I gained 30 pounds in three months, yeah. um, and I didn't, I felt horrible, huh. um, you know, so. Was that because, like, was there, I don't know much about this particular thing, so is there, like, a lot of hormones in that medication then, or, like, a high dose, or? You know what? I don't know. It's just what they give you, you know, okay. and that's just, I was really ignorant, you know, and I had my hysterectomy, you know, if I knew then what I know now, because it was 14 years ago, yeah. I would have done things completely different. First of all, I would have, you know, started treating myself naturally. Right. And not maybe prevented the hysterectomy because they did a total. So they took oh. all of, you know, my ovaries and everything. Wipes yeah. out. Everything, yeah. Oh. And so, you know, but I, I'm not sure why they give you Premarin. And when I, when that didn't work for me, they put me on an estradiol patch. Okay. And so it's a transdermal patch. And I was on that for years. Okay. And same thing, though, means that they kept the weight on and everything. And so... Gotcha. You know, I got at the same time I got off of regular thyroid, I also got off of, of um, pharmaceutical gotcha. you know, hormone replacement and went on to natural hormone replacement. Can you share a little bit about that? With the, what, what is the natural hormone replacement that you've, you've turned to? The one that I was on, sadly, has been discontinued. It was just, um, well, they actually, and I, I recommend this for anybody in menopause, is actually have have a natural path do um do some tests, you know, blood tests, spit tests, whatever, to yeah. find out what really, what your hormones are happening. You know, mine, I actually had way too much estrogen mm. and, you know, and that's what the patch was, was estradiol. It was, you know, an, a part, an estrogen. Gotcha. So, and the fact that I was obese and I had a lot of belly fat, my body was also manufacturing and storing estrogen. So gotcha. I had estrogen overload and as the doctor I went to, he described it, estrogen is like an angry hormone. It, it's what causes the insomnia, yeah. the rage, the <laughs> anger, you know, the yeah. just the horrible things of menopause. Yeah, uh, gotcha. And I had no progesterone. So he completely took me off of all the estrogen and just gave me um, progesterone sublingual drops. Okay. And they balanced me out. I was balanced out on those for about seven years. Cool. How, how, what were the changes in how you felt when you added that in? I was able to sleep at night. I wasn't angry. I was I was balanced emotionally, like, mentally. Ah, I I can be. Yeah, and and then you know it paved the way for me also to be able to start losing weight as well. Cool. All kind of came all you know it was a progression, but um, gotcha. sadly they quit making them because the FDA is starting to regulate them, okay. and so the labs quit making them. Oh, I see. So, but you can still get like. The because is it is that the same as bioidentical hormones? It's not, but that's, not. What, they, okay. that's what my doctor um at the and that's another reason I think I've maybe put on some weight the beginning of this year yeah. um is because since they quit making them I got off of it. Gotcha. I just it's like well I can't get it anymore. Yeah, so. you weren't sure what else to do. So right, I've been in menopause for you know fourteen years. And, yeah. You know maybe I'm good. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I I stopped taking them and I noticed you know um I started getting tired. I, I wasn't able to work out. I didn't have the energy to work out okay. and things like that. And so that's, I went back, I went to a new doctor. And um, so he did prescribe, he at one up my armor, he doubled it. Oh, cool. Um, he did bl extensive blood work Cool. and then upped my, my thyroid and then put me on bioidentical. So it has um, testosterone, estrogen, uh, three different small doses of estrogen and then progesterone. Gotcha. Um, and so, and it took, it took a little bit to adjust it because I'm really sensitive to estrogen. So he had to actually lower the estrogen. Okay. Even. So you so. used to have too much, but then over time, like your, your, your body didn't have that much anymore. No, of estrogen. actually because of the tummy tuck. That's what oh, he said. Right. Okay. Because I wasn't taking any, any internally, you know, yeah. medicine wise. And then I had all the belly fat removed. Yeah. I didn't have the place that stored manufactured estrogen any oh. longer. Because that's why I asked him, I said, how did I go from too much to none? And he yeah. says, you don't have any belly fat anymore. Oh. I'm like, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Cool. So. so he put you on that. And so do you mind if I ask how many grains of armor you're on then now? 60. 60 
I think my mil milligrams or you know what? I'd have to go check it. I think the grains is in like one, two, and three grains, but um, um but maybe it's like sixteen milligrams or something. Maybe so, yeah. I was I just was curious thinking... for other people that are on it to compare because optimizing thyroid hormone levels like with with this stuff can be really hard, and it's like pulling teeth to get your doctor to increase your dose or to. It really is, so... and he actually he was the one who with my lab results came back. He says he's going to raise that, and so I was only taking thirty, and he raised okay. it. so it must be milligrams. Oh. Oh, okay, cool. Do you feel like you noticed a little bit of a difference in how you're feeling from that? Or it all happened waiting? right around the same time as gotcha. the hormones, the the and, and the eight, now the HCG too. Right. Yeah. So gotcha. All three, my you know, in the past two weeks, I've got my life back again, which I had been you know really gotten. Um, it was getting hard. I was physically. Yeah in pain i was exhausted tired you yeah. know um mentally not there yeah. you know emotional and then you know depression and stuff from just feeling crappy right yeah you know i so. know and I, and I think that's how things really are sometimes it's like we all have like ups in life where you feel better and it's easier to keep all those other side things in control like your weight yes but unfortunately yeah there's times when this when you feel that bad yeah it's, you just can't keep all the pieces of all the little stuff in order. It's like just all you can do just keep surviving sometimes, you know? Yeah. That's why so. I thought I would start my blog up again because I just feel like I've been, you know, I'm having to pick the pieces all up again. You know, yeah. it's like I was doing so well and then, yeah. you know, it's like, wow, I've, you know, I've turned a corner and then yeah. all of a sudden, bam, I'm back down. And I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, regroup, start yeah. over and, you know, take the necessary steps, do what you need to do to get back, you know, up again. So I'm in process. That's this so point. good. Yeah. And it's, it's good to hear that too, because it's, you realize that you don't want to just like, when, when things go downhill, you don't want to just let it be. You want to try to find like you, like you're doing, trying to find the source of the problem. Like, why am I having symptoms again? Right. You know, what has worked in the past or researching for new ones because yeah. It can make and such that's a difference. It. No, living, you know, living, well, you with Hashimoto's and, and having an autoimmune disorder, when all of a sudden it's under control and you have your life back and you're healthy and vibrant and thriving and, yeah. you know, able to be really active and yeah. do things, you know, I, in the last four years with losing the weight and getting healthy, I was able to do things I'd never dreamed I would do. That's so cool. And then all of a sudden to start having symptoms again and like, whoa, 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 uh-uh, I, yeah. I have my life back. I am not going to let this right. take a hold. I'm yeah. going to fuck it everything I have because yeah. I like having an active life. Right. I know. I mean, that's what we all want. And it can be scary, like you said, because you can remember how things were. And so it's scary when things come back because I've experienced that too because you're like, no, like you said, no, I don't want to go back there. I'm happy here yes so yes. and it's no, this my life for the rest of my life <laughs> yeah so that's really cool that you're you're figuring that out and yeah finding those things again yeah and it is such a delicate balance because um i actually i have an update coming soon about my own personal thing it's been a year and nine months now since i finished hcg but um, I've had some major fluctuations too in health and yeah sometimes it's like been really good and then um, other times it's like I've had a lot of symptoms in recent months and and I've had kind of like unexplained weight gain a little bit I've actually already kind of corrected it you know but I had to make some major adjustments mm -hmm. in order to yeah because it was so weird and, and it shows the power that hormones and if they're not right that mm -hmm. they have because it's like wait a minute my life is the same and I gained right. five pounds. Like, what, what happened here? Yeah. You know? You know, hormones, I think, are just huge. And you don't, you know, I never put the female hormones, you know, with the thyroid hormones, with, you know, the hypothalamus yeah. and yeah. all of the different, I didn't realize that, you know, there's such a fine balance. Yeah. And, you know. And sometimes it's like trial and error. It's like, you don't oh. know exactly which one's producing the most or how to get them all balanced. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Complete trial and error. Good, a good natural path, you know, is a, a big help. And, and even that, and I'm fortunate that I have a really good one. At this yeah. Point. Yeah, and that's good. And, and thankfully, you know, with the internet, even though there can be inaccurate information online, I feel there's also a lot of accurate information. I, I feel, yes. honestly, I mean, I've learned almost everything that I figured out about myself to get myself to this point and to stay here yeah. pretty much online, you know? So it's like, you yeah. know, you have to sometimes weigh what you read, but 
we're all smart. You know, usually we can figure it out. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. When you are actually um, maintaining your weight during that period, how were you eating? What What was your life foods? Your life food style. Your food lifestyle. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because I don't really feel as though I ever got it down yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the last year I was working out like crazy, you know, I was, you know, doing anywhere from 30 to 90 minute, you know, hit aerobic workouts, running sometimes both on the same days, Okay. Um, six days a week. Um, gotcha. you know, I, I actually became a slave to working out. Oh, okay. um, so yeah. a little overboard. <laughs> I did. You know, I've kind of got that kind of a personality. You I know, kinda... I'm actually a little bit of an addictive personality myself. So it sounds like yeah. you're a little bit like that too. <laughs> yeah. I kind of, you know, oh, a little bit's good a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, and you know, the, that old thing of, you know, I work out because I like to eat. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, I maintained, but I was, con I was going up little bits by little bits by little bits. And I think that's how it happens. And, and I can actually pinpoint it right back to the time and day. Mm -hmm. Um, it was 4th of July, 2013. Yeah. I had been doing well. I had done a couple, I had done one cycle, uh, one round of HCG last year okay. and then went on maintenance, was doing great. And, um, 4th of July, I, had some beer and a hot dog with buns and potato yeah. chips uh -huh. and you know and, and nothing really happened you know my world didn't explode yeah so i thought okay you know i can start allowing this in and it was more of just a weekend thing okay um you know during the week i'm pretty regimented but um along with the workouts i was, was doing they also had recommended diets and it seems like they all really included carbs and their whole, you know, philosophy is you need carbs if you're working out. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I felt like I was always playing this balancing thing with carbs being in my life. Um, yeah. you know, I, I would still do as low carb as possible. Then you do, you know, the low carb and the low fat. Well, low fat has more carbs, has more chemicals, right. just, you know, this weird thing. Right. Um, and that was their diet the recommendations were low, low carb, low fat. So I, I really don't feel like I ever did what was best for me. It was all still a bunch of trial and error. Okay. You know, I have in my mind now what my goal, my plan, my thought is. Yeah. For after this maintenance round, um, I'm, I'm going to be really trying the um, low carb and not doing low fat though. Do you know, kind of yeah. like the high fat, low carb. Yeah. But and that's around, working so, for a lot of women, you know. It is. Um, I have some girlfriends who do HCG with me, and um, that's what they do. They basically go to P3, and they never graduate to P4. Yeah. They just stay in P3. Um, they, though, have carb addiction. I don't really feel that I, I'm because I could take it or leave it. I mean, right now, I crave pastrami and, <laughs> you know. Salt stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't crave candy or... Well, that's chips. good. Yeah. <laughs> One thing you have going for you. <laughs> I, I'm blessed. I, I don't, yeah, have, but um, I, I, I think that I, I still, I think I'm going to give myself a cheat day once yeah. a week because yeah. I really do feel that I, I just, I think it's necessary. I, one, I think it, it switches up, you know, mm -hmm. like what your body's doing. Right. Kind of puts some chaos in there and yeah. uh, I, I'll try it. It's going to... Yeah. It'll, no, I mean, the, the thoughts are logical. Um, you know, f lately it seems like some of the newer research or whatever that's coming out is that um, for women, low-carb low is good, but that if it's so, like if you never have carbs, that it can right. actually affect your hormone levels um, in a negative way. So, but yeah, not that you would be constantly eating tons of bread, but yeah, so I mean, the idea of having it like once a week seems like a really balanced way to kind of keep it in there, but it is true, like what you said, a lot of women in menopause, it's just the reality, is that maintaining is more difficult, yeah. and um, yeah. yeah, and that the P3 eating lifestyle in general is kind of the way to go for a lot of women in that age bracket, you know, um, yeah. and that's the hard thing, is like we have what we have to deal with, and so it's kind of like sometimes you do have to make choices, um, but thankfully, you know, there are so many good foods within the P3 realm. Yes. I mean, that's, my girlfriends have been sharing, you know, and it's like, you know, on their Pinterest boards and stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah. well, I shouldn't have any problem at all. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, in fact, for everyone who's watching, you know, if, if 
I'm going to put, I'll post, ugh, I'll put a link to, I have two Pinterest boards that are, one is P3 recipes and I've checked them all to make sure they're P3 approved. Right. And then another one is a sugar-free, grain-free dessert recipe board. Perfect. With, yeah, and so it's just like everything that's like, you know, whether it's almond flour or flaxseed meal or just sugar replacements. But yeah, just, and it, when you look at them, they're like, boy, they look really delicious. So. Absolutely. That's, you know, she started sharing all these things. I'm like, I don't see, I have a problem with yeah. being able to live like that. But, you know, my, my husband, and this has been, you know, where, where I have a challenge. He loves to go out for meals. Oh, yeah. gotcha. He loves to go to restaurants. And yeah. so, you know, I remember, you know, lots of times having a lot of anxiety. You know, God, i got to go to a restaurant, you know, freaking out in my head. What am I yeah. going to order? How am yeah. I going to stay on track and all of that? Um, you know, so that's where the one day a week, I think, we're yeah. just going to, you know, I'm going to order whatever I feel like ordering and not yeah. have that stress and anxiety of worrying about, you know, if I want to go have chips and salsa right. with you know, and Mexican food and a beer with my husband, I'm going to go do that because yeah. I'm not going to deprive my lifestyle with my husband, you know, to be able to stay, you know, a size six or eight. Right. Yeah. And, and I agree with the whole mentality where you have to balance you know, what, what you want or what you want to look like with having a reasonable life, you know, exactly. I mean, cause you can take it so far and yeah, that you're miserable all the time and you have no life. And also right. like, what's the point of that? You know, exactly. unless exactly. you're just so vain that that's all that matters is how you look. But I mean, that's and not that's really it. any kind of life for most people. Right. So. Right. So, yeah. agree. So, cool. yeah, that's my goal. We'll, that's, we'll see how it works. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And you know, another tool that I've used um, myself, like, you know, when I want to maybe indulge in it, something, and I don't know that everyone feels comfortable th with this, but I've done a lot of research on fasting, and um, and I have used it now for the last couple of years, maybe even three years now, um, intermittent fasting. It's just where you huh. fast for 18 to 24 hours, yeah. um, just like one day a week or maybe even once a month. But So sometimes if I know there's something coming up, I might choose to fast that day and then um, you'll eat just the dinner and then you, it's like you can eat more because you're basically just creating a calorie balance, you know, right. for the day yeah. or for the week. And so, um, you know, you people of course could take it too far by doing it every day or something, but right. obviously within reason, I have found it to be very effective for me. Um, and that way you're not getting overly full or eating too many calories, but you're still getting to do something extra now and then, right. you know. And it's not bad for the body to give it a break for, mm -hmm. you know, a good 12, 16, 18, 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I actually really love it. The other thing I love about fasting is um, I was very surprised actually by this, but it, it makes me crave real food. Um, because unlike you, I am one of those kind of sugaraholic people that I've always craved sugar. Um, I don't eat it anymore. But um, I found that when I would fast, if I had been kind of like craving junk food and kind of getting into any bad habit, if I would fast for, you know, like 24 hours, the only thing I would want at the end of that was like a steak and some broccoli and like a big salad. Like seriously, I would crave real whole foods and it's like it kind of reset me. So that's, yeah, that makes sense because yeah. you figure, you know, if you're giving your body a break, what do you want to put in it after you've given it a break with something healthy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that really is what I would crave. Like that's what I would want. And that's what you want is like to get to that point where your body wants the things that are healthy for you, you know, exactly. instead of yeah. like constantly fighting yourself for like, I should eat what's healthy, but all I want is what's bad. Right. That's hard. Yeah. So, yeah. And when cool. you get the habit of it, you know, like most of last year, you know, actually I would never buy any processed junk food until cool. after my surgery. And then I yeah. found myself like buying M&Ms and stuff I was like, what is with that? What's going you know? on? Yeah. And right. we actually talked about that. What can happen like from a, um, a surgery, like, if it elevates your cortisol levels, when you have elevated cortisol levels, it can actually make you crave carbs and crave sugar. Yeah, well, yeah. And, that, and I figured from the antibiotics, it yeah. probably, I ended up with candida. Yeah, that's the other thing. Right. So, yeah, and it made me, you know, bloat up and crave carbs and sugar. And like, and like I said, I was buying things that I would never bring into my house, yeah. you know, for the past four years. And my husband's diabetic also, gotcha. you know, and so we just don't bring garbage into the home. But all of a yeah. sudden I was, and I was like, this is just like, this is not what I would normally do. Yeah. Right. Something's really off here for me to, you know, buy this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because I haven't had to take antibiotics much at all for several years, but I did actually have to take a two week course um, several months ago. 
And I was a little nervous because I do deal with sugar cravings, although I don't have them usually anymore. And, and by the end of the two weeks, I was having similar experiences that I used to have when I was still addicted to sugar. Like I'd go to Whole Foods and I, I walked around basically like I kept wanting to buy gluten-free desserts like full of sugar. Right. And I was having a really hard time like not doing it. And I haven't felt like that in a long time. Like now I go, I just get my healthy food. I don't even think about it. And it was very emotionally trying. And so I agree. It's like that course of antibiotics possibly could have messed yeah. with my flora a little bit. And, and it was causing those cravings again. And it was horrible. Right. So, and it took a little while to fix. But yeah, that's interesting. So when you're actually on a round of HCG, can you share like how you go about it? Do you stick to the protocol fairly strictly or do you find yourself cheating a lot or how does that go for you? No, I'm not a cheater. And that's, it was really interesting because I would, you know, when I would, my first, first several rounds, in fact, all of my rounds up until this one, I actually did through a clinic, you okay. know, a weight management clinic. Yeah. And, um, I, and I would, I became really good friends with, you know, the lady that, you know, I would meet with every week and, you know, she would ask me, you know, have you cheated? And I'm like, no, why? Yeah. I don't get it. I don't understand how people would spend that kind of money Yeah. and that kind of effort and then cheat. It just made no sense to my brain. Right. Uh, right. So no, I'm pretty militant actually. Cool. I don't, um, I don't cheat at all. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm a real rules and boundaries person. Yeah. So, you know, that's, HEG is really easy for me to do because gotcha. it's, you have clear cut rules, clear cut boundaries. Gotcha. And so, um, so it's almost like P2 is easier for you than P3 in a sense. Oh or my gosh. Yeah. Because That's, it's so I, set. I completely freak out and go through horrible anxiety when I come to maintenance because there's just too many options. Yeah. Like, and ah. so, yeah. And it's interesting because this round now, just in doing research and, and listening to different things, I actually last week started experimenting with like mixing my vegetables. Yeah. I even added in some chocolate delight with coconut oil. Uh -huh. I thought they were delicious. <laughs> but then my my losses slowed down yeah. and I was like, okay, going back to protocol. So yeah. today I'm totally back, completely protocol. Cool. Yeah. So. I know and in general that's the way to go. And also I do think you need to kind of go along with what you feel in your gut is best for you. Like right. I, I, sometimes I think that like if you don't feel comfortable with something, even if it's actually an okay thing to do, it's actually right. going to cause bad results because you don't um, feel comfortable with it, like inside, you know, and yeah, well, I, you know, and I, I actually did it. Well, I looked at it as experimenting. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to experiment with mixing my vegetables because yeah, in theory, it makes sense that you should be able to mix your vegetables. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I really don't think the vegetables were the issue. I yeah. think that I, I do think the, the coconut oil for me, the yeah. coconut oil was yeah. the issue. I, and I do actually have a whole post on coconut oil. I, I do feel the body's sensitive to fat, like Dr. Simeon said, right. on HCG. So I, I, that is one of those things that at this time I, I wouldn't use coconut oil myself and yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, getting strict protocol again will, yeah. you know, make up for the lack of loss last week. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. So, cool. yeah. Can you, you, we talked a little bit about how you kind of got into fitness, um, because a lot of people, when they do the protocol, um, they're, they come from a place where they were sedentary or they were overweight their whole life, so they never got into that, and it's kind of overwhelming, or they feel like they're not going to, can you just tell me, were you active before and you just got back into it, or how was that for you? No, no not at all, not at all. I was, um, I mean, I tried things while I was overweight. Yeah. Um, you know, I would try workout videos or I, I would go to the gym and I would, you know, I, I went to the gym and I took a Pilates class and I actually liked it. You yeah. know, um, it didn't really help with my weight or anything like that, you yeah. know, but I liked it. Um, but nothing ever lasted really. Um, I live in a real remote area. So, you know, home, home videos, you know, so I had the, like the original turbo jam with Shalene Johnson, you know, yeah, that, yeah. and I still have it, um, mm -hmm. but that I worked out to. So, and I did it for a while and, you know, but it, it's, it's hard when you're over 200 pounds to work out. Yeah. And so, um, with the HCG, you know, of course you're not supposed to work out while you're, you know, on P2. So, um, but I, I started with baby steps I, and I, I'm just a real firm believer in baby steps. Yeah. Um, 
And I started walking. And so I started just doing the things, you know, that you hear the silly things, you know, park further out in the parking lot, take your shopping cart back. You know, um, then I would start um, going up and down the stairs at work on my lunch hour. You know, I'd go down one or, once or twice just to get some extra. Cool. Um, I had a, a girlfriend at work, who's a very, 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 very thin. Um, and we would go for walks on our lunch break and things like that. Cool. Um, and so I built up stamina, you know, that way. And then um, when I decided to get healthy, um, and like I said, it was an aha moment when I was 48, I was looking at, you know, turning 50 in a couple of years and realizing, you know, that I was not going to be around in this world for very long if I continued my life the way it was. I see. And so I made, you know, the decision I was going to get healthy. And so I had to set a goal. Well, my sister-in-law, my husband's sister is very tiny and always has been, and she's very active. And, you know, she, uh, I'll never forget when I was pregnant with my daughter, I had two hamburgers and she walked in and she's like, you're going to eat both of those. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, you know, but it was just a different mind frame, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, she's just always been healthy, whole foods, active. She's a rock climber and bicyclist okay. and all yeah. that. So, um, I said, I want to do something really monumental and she's the same age. So when we turn 50, I want to do something really monumental. And so she's like, well, why don't we do a, a three day trans Sierra trek where we backpack across the Sierra Nevada mountains. Wow. And I was like, that's it. That's, you know, cool. well, first she was like, we can climb Mount McKinley. And she says, but there's, you know, a lot of people do it. Yeah. I, said, I want to do something solid, to, you know, in, in a way in nature. Yeah. Not, not a herd of people. Cool. And so I started, once I started getting my, you know, stamina up, taking some of the weight off with the HCG, um, when I would be on maintenance and off of, off of protocol, I would, um, I started carrying the backpack full of, you know, water bottles cool. with weights and then started, you know, I started at a half a mile and then one mile and then two and then four. And, wow. um, my longest was 12. I went wow. one day. I, um, and, it, and it's back behind my house. I live um, adjacent to 600 acres oh, of cool. cattle grazing land. And there's, it's about a thousand foot um, elevation cool. incline and decline. Awesome. So yeah, I just started hiking out in the country. And, um, and so we did, we did the, the three day Trans Sierra awesome. track. So how many miles total was that? Do you know? Oh my gosh. I think it was 22 miles okay. total. And how many um, pounds were you carrying in your backpack? 28 pounds. Cool. Yeah, we had to have a bear canister, you know, right. permit the whole thing of go out in the wilderness. Yeah. And our, the, the highest peak we went over was 12,000 feet. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, so that's a lot of elevation gain you guys probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. Our first night we camped at 11,000. I live at oh, three, okay. you know, 25, 3,000, so, yeah. you know, I felt pretty acclimated to, to you know. Yeah. But um, I was, my, you know, 11,000 feet makes you a little goofy. Yeah. Because, like, you know, with lack of oxygen, your head gets, yeah, yeah. You get kind, of, kind of goofy. Yes. So, um, and I hadn't lost all my weight yet. I was probably still in the 170 area okay. when we did that. Um, but you were yeah. a lot stronger, obviously, from just working on that, and you had lost some weight, so. Yes, cool. yes, exactly. So, awesome. and then I, um, not, it was later that year, I think, um, my sister ended up with breast cancer, and we ended oh. up, um, I did a, a 5k Susan Susan Coleman you know yeah. 5k walk yeah. yeah and um because I'm not a runner and yeah. never you never thought I would be a runner yeah. and um as I was walking and I was looking at these people running and I realized that this time I had actually it was like in my 150s okay and I realized there's no reason I can't do what they're doing uh -huh. and so I made the goal to um that the following year I would actually run it and cool. so I ran it. I ran a 12K twice. Cool. And last February, I ran a half marathon. Awesome. I never thought I would ever, ever do. You yeah. Know? And, and you actually enjoy the running. Is that right? I do love running. I, you know, cool. I found that it's therapy for me. You yeah. know, I work on the computer all day long so that after, when I get off work, I can just shut the computer off, shut the phone off, and I can just go out and just run and be with my breath and you know, yeah. I pray and listen to music and just kind of just isolate and kind of unwind from everything. Cool. So. That's so neat. Yeah. And I think that's really good to share too, because um, for a lot of people kind of finishing or getting close to losing their weight, 
Um, mm. I, I do think finding a way to be active in a way that you enjoy yes. is a big part of, of being able to kind of maintain and keep things in balance. And um, I think it's just interesting how just by trying things out, you kind of ended up discovering something that you didn't know that you would like, you know? Oh, but actually, I would have never, you know, it was the furthest thing from my <laughs> mind that I would ever, I mean, I literally was that person that said, if you ever see me running, yeah, you better run to something scary <laughs> so, chase me because I am not a runner. Yeah. And, um, so it was the furthest thing that I would have ever imagined. In fact, most people that know me, that, you know, that was, they were just as surprised as I was, is that running became the thing like, that I like to do. Cool. Well, and that's it. I mean, I tried different things. I mean, I like hiking, yeah. but, you know, the equipment that it takes, it just, it's, it's an expensive hobby. Yeah. Um, you know, I like, I like working out in my, my living room. Yeah. I, you know, I like aerobics. I like Pilates. You know, right now while I'm on this, I'm doing Tai Chi just for stretching and, and yeah. mobility and to get my balance back after my surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the running is the one thing that, you know, I think I enjoy more than anything else. Oh, that is really neat. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny. Um, with, with, I talk about CrossFit all the time on my, on my yeah. blog, you know, and I mean, I didn't know anything about it until I found out about it. And I never would have seen myself like getting into weightlifting. I mean, like it's really not, I mean, I liked doing pushups and stuff when I was a teenager and I, I was into kind of being in shape, but as far as heavy weightlifting, which is actually kind of my favorite part of CrossFit, I really love it. And it's so funny. I, I wouldn't have thought that either. I wouldn't. Yeah, but I really do. So yeah. Yeah, so it I'm, is cool to just try stuff. About CrossFit. I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about yeah, it. Yeah, so but it's just cool to show, you know, for everyone else, like maybe just try things out, even if you're not sure what it's all about or how it would feel. Um, yes. And because your body has changed, I think we tend to still think in terms of how difficult something felt when we were overweight. Right. And so you kind of think like, oh, well, like you said, like, oh, I can't run or I can't. Because, right. but then you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm 50 pounds less. Hold on here. Exactly Let me give it a try. Oh, I can't run. I have bad knees. Well, I don't have bad knees without, you know, with being 50 pounds less. Yeah. So, so that's, yeah. the, I think that's a good takeaway. You know, I guess along with that, what are some other positive changes that you've had as a result of your overall weight loss? Um, I think mentally and emotionally, I mean, the confidence, you know, I think when you, when you're obese, I'm a fry. <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, yeah, when you're obese, um, you feel invisible mm. or even numb. Um, yeah. Like people, you know, they judge you. Yeah. And uh, so you don't, you, you isolate, you don't want to go out, you don't want to be around people. Yeah. You hide in pictures, you know, you hide yeah. behind the camera, you know. Yeah. Um, most of my pictures that I'm in that I actually would allow to be taken, you know, because I was forced to, I would have one of my children, you know, standing strategically, you know, strategically <laughs> in front of half of me. So only half of me showed, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, so I think confidence just to, you know, I think my husband, he's so cute because one of the things he likes is the fact that I can actually go to a store and I can buy normal people clothes, you yeah. know, and I can put them on. And not sit there and go, oh, yeah, I thought I was hoping, or, you know, God, going to a store and going into the changing room and just coming out horribly depressed because everything you thought might look good on you. Yeah, it didn't. Horrible on you. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that's a lot of it is just being able to go places and, you know, buy clothes that fit. Yeah. And be able to walk out your door with confidence, knowing that, you know, people aren't going to look at you like, oh, look at that fat, lazy slob. Yeah. Which is sad. Yeah, it is. It's funny, actually, that you mentioned that, too, because I just finished recording another interview with a woman who's, she's lost actually 122 pounds so far okay. in a year with HCG. Wow. And she actually mentioned that that was one of the biggest things she's noticed because she's lost so much in just one year. Yeah. She says she notices a huge difference in how strangers treat her. She said now people talk to her, they make eye yes. contact. She yes. said before she felt like like she was a plague or something. Like people would avoid eye contact. They didn't want anything to do with her. And she said that the she's like the difference is very obvious, you know, which is sad, you know. It is. It is. You're definitely treated completely different. Yeah. And it's one of those things you can't really hide, you know. 
No, I mean, you try to camouflage them. Right. Can, but you really, right. you know, especially like when I see my before pictures and I thought I was doing a great job of camouflaging it. Yeah. And you look at it and go, okay, no, you were just fat. Oh. You were just fat, you know. And, yeah. you know, and my grandmother was morbidly obese my whole life. And, okay. you know, and I take after her out of everybody in my family. I take after her. Oh, wow. And, um, and it's sad because I know what she had to have gone through her entire life, you know, yeah. being like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I ended up being there, too. Right. And so, so yeah, the confidence, being able to wear great clothes. Um, and just, just feel normal, right? Like you said, like. Feel normal. It's just yeah. like, okay, I'm normal. I yeah. could just not have to have that be a big thing that people are going to take notice of. Right. You know, if you're eating out in public, you know, not afraid that people are looking at you going, oh, yeah, just what you need, piggy. You know, yeah. eat something else, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, totally. Um, that and being active, just being able to be active again, I feel like. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to live a lot longer yeah. and, and I'm going to, my quality of life is just so improved. I you know, get to play with my grandkids Aww. and, you know, have fun and stuff with my husband and my kids That's so and do, cool. do fun activities instead That's of you know, watching them enjoy the activities. Right. Yeah. And it's like, not only do you get to enjoy that, but you also don't have to spend so much time probably having negative feelings about what you aren't able to do, Yeah. you know? So I remember one time going to a an amusement park, and in, at my heaviest, and my daughter and I went to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, and the ride that we got on had one of those big thing bars that came over the top. Oh yeah. And, and I remember the guy pushing on it and pushing on oh. it and like almost you know putting up his foot to you know to click to me. get it to lock yeah to lock and thinking uh. oh my gosh that's just so horribly mortifying to be there and you yeah. know and so that's why you stop doing things just because you know that you're too fat to do yeah. things you know gotcha. in this world. yeah oh but you're in a much better place you know the one thing i feel like we get out of this um uh, because these stories are so so many of the women that are losing it with this have all had similar stories to share mm -hmm. and i feel like in some ways it's really valuable having been there because you have so much more compassion, you know, for people. Yeah. And you appreciate what you have now more too, you know. I always said when I actually when I got heavy the first time, I um because I pretty much made it through school and my teenage years on my looks. Yeah. And when I got heavy the first time, I realized, oh, I have to develop a character <sighs> because in my don't I don't have my looks right now. Yeah. So you know, I, I feel that yeah. I ended up being more balanced because I had to develop a character, develop, you know, become a human person and not, yeah. you know, you know, rely on your looks. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then also, you know, like you said, compassion and understanding for other people that have, you know, struggles and challenges in life. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I know because sometimes it's a little frustrating, like on occasion, I know I do a lot of research online and so sometimes I'll come across, you know, some fitness blog or of someone who, who's never been overweight, obviously, and, and just the way yes. that they speak about it. Of, of course, we all want to lose weight and be thinner. We all yes. know that. But the way that it's spoken about is kind of derogatory almost a little bit. Like, you know, like, well, what's wrong with these people? Or don't you know that? And it's hard. It's like, you know, this is a real struggle that some people face. And it's just, that's not too helpful. <laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. Because, you know, for some people it's health. For some people it's, yeah. you know. Un, you know, they're uneducated as far as food goes, you know, yeah. some, it's a whole bunch of different things that just, so yeah, you can't just have a blanket statement of, oh, why can't they just get it like I, I know, did. and like everyone has different struggles too, it's like maybe food was never a struggle for you, but you have personality struggles or exactly. something, obviously, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. so. you know, so yeah, it does definitely make you a lot more graceful in understanding people, you know, yeah. full of grace and mercy yeah. to understand people's challenges. You know, I think there's, there's a saying and I love it, but it just talks that I don't remember it offhand, but it talks about how, how, you know, be, just be kind to everybody because you don't know what struggle they're going through. Right. Exactly. That, that you don't know about. Right. Yeah. Right. I know. Just last one, you know, what advice would you give to other HCG or starting this journey? What do you think is the most important things to keep in mind? Be patient. <laughs> yeah. Be patient. Roll with it. Because um, I think some of the hardest things, and I know with some of my girlfriends that I've done it with, is 
you know, like today I was really depressed because, you know, I was really hoping for a nice drop and there was none, you know, mm. like 0. 0.2 yeah. drop today after, you know, several 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2, 0. 0. 0.0 drops. Yeah. Um, so you just have to be patient and trust the process, yeah. you know, make adjustments, you know, um, my first several rounds, I never even told anybody I was doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, so my husband and I were pretty much, my kids were the only ones that knew I was actually doing it. A few trusted friends. Um, this round, you know, I've gotten really involved with like ATG communities online cool. and, um, and have friends who are doing it at the same time. So cool. we're doing it together and sharing the process and, and encouraging each other. And so, you know, and, and making suggestions, it's like, you know, I, you know, tried a few things last week. So did my girlfriend. We both yeah. found that it didn't work for us. So yeah. it's like, okay, let's adjust back to protocol, do right. it right. Um, so yeah, I think um, share your process with somebody trusted who can keep you accountable yeah. um, and be patient and I, follow the protocol. I mm -hmm. think it's just a waste to put your body through it and right. not not stick to it. I mean, because the end goal is to reset your hypothalamus and your metabolism. Yeah. And if you're not going to follow the process and the protocol, then you're just kind of making your messing your metabolism up further for the future. Right. Yeah, I, I do think you can do that. And, it, and it, it's kind of a difficult. Well, I know you said you like kind of P2 in a sense, but it is a difficult protocol as well. So it's, it is. it's like if you're going to put yourself through that, you want to try to, yeah, get good results, you know, for your right. time. Yeah. And, and you know what? any of us can do anything for 40 days. Yeah. I mean, for those that are doing the full 40 day protocol, you can do anything for 40 days. It's right. less than two months. Yeah. I mean, it's just such a short period of time. And right. for, for the changes that you end up gaining, you know, right. and not just the weight loss. I mean, the weight loss is of course the ultimate, but you learn so much about yourself and why you overeat, you know, what foods are your trigger foods? You know, you learn so much of what got you to where you were. Right. That, you know, because you're you're basically cutting it down to such bare minimums, you know, that, and, and then you reevaluate a lot of things. I mean, I went through so much growth um, internally um, on through this process, yeah. just, you know, from just stripping everything away and eating very minimally and, really experience experiencing the little bit of food you get yeah yeah no that's so true and i think that that is really the key to making a success of this is because most people are going to have to have an internal transformation like you said yeah. you know i think sometimes um when people started out they're not realizing that at first right. and then it's like kind of shocking once you're on it because now you're without the things that you didn't realize you were using to cope with things in life and all of a sudden you're like whoa like and then you realize and then you like regroup and you're like okay I have some major issues to work on and and, and the protocol is great for that if you're ready for it you know yes yeah so, so that would be yeah one of the biggest is, oh, that cool. and yeah be prepared you know set yourself up make sure that you've got everything lined up don't just try to jump into it because sure. it's really hard to adjust on the fly it's definitely something you have to plan for prepare for shop for you know meal preparation ahead of time you know the more yeah. stuff you do ahead of time the more successful you'll be well thank you for all that lanita really appreciate it for coming on today thank you i appreciate the just the opportunity i know that it's been life-changing for me and i just feel that i want to share that with with others, you know, yeah. that, there, that there's hope. I think that's my big thing is there is hope. We don't have to live the way we were living.